Hi guys, how's it going? My name is Sandra von der Fey. Uh, I want to speak to you about uh, the identity of your partnerships. I have created this as a carousel, but I know that a lot of you don't like to read. So I figured, why don't I speak on it so you can listen to it when you're driving, when you have a moment. Uh, so like I mentioned, I was at church, the Logic Church on Sunday, and um, it was pretty much a a major lesson that like the pastor was teaching about how Jesus is the real deal and I took a lot of things from it and what really spoke to me was beyond the main message was the story the very inspiring story about Ruth right which is a which is um a canon book in the bible and for me as a person you know I have to always express myself writing is my outlet so here we go the Identity of Your Partnerships by Sandra von Dufe. So, in today's world, we choose people by first asking, what do you do? This is to perceive their financial value without choosing who they are. We don't remember what they have now doesn't equate to who they are and what they will become. In the past, our parents used to ask, who are their parents? Where are they from? They were asking identity questions. And like I said, this was actually, insp this was said by the pastor in church. So I would tell you the things that he said and the one I took from it. Uh, recently, I have been very keen on the who, the core fiber of their being, that's their identity. Uh, at church, he said something very profound, among other things, right? He said, do not choose a partner without seeing their default setting. And I was like, yeah, hmm, that's a word, huh? And then we, he took us to the book of Ruth. And like I, like I mentioned earlier, Ruth is a, is, a, is a canon book in the Christian Bible, but it's also found in the Hebrew Bible as well. So if you read the book of Ruth 1, you would see that Naomi's husband died in the land of Moab, right? So Naomi's two sons, the husbands of Ruth and uh, um and Oprah died. Naomi is a woman, she's lost two sons, and these sons happen to be the husbands of Ruth and Oprah. Then she decides that she's going to return to Israel to speak to her fallen son spouses, okay? Here's what the summary of events becomes. There is this long back and forth conversation because Naomi, from her perspective, she's acting in the best interest of her um, daughter-in-laws, right? Because she's like, listen, my sons are dead. I can't really offer you anything. You guys are young. I want you to live your lives. You know, hopefully you can find new livelihoods and, you know, live again. So there's two daughter-in-laws here. Opa, according to Ruth 115, eventually returns to her land and her former gods. But Ruth, in the Bible, it says that she claves onto Naomi. But I'm going to use an easy word. So she holds on to Naomi. And... There's this almost poetic confession, right? Where she says, your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die. And there I will be buried, right? May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. So Naomi is just like, okay. And uh, she sees that Ruth is quite determined. And so she says, okay, nothing more. It's all good. Now let's go to the lessons for me. Again, I listened to what Pastor Flo said, and there's also some things that particularly spoke to me. Guys, I don't know what phase you're all in, but some things just stick out to you because it's it's the word, right? It's what you need for your own daily bread to like live your earthly life. Uh, I think one thing that really stood out for me here is um, discernment through actions and not words. So in life and situations, when your faith is dampened or when you feel like, okay, I've reached my wit's end, I'm declining, right? I really feel like there's two things here. So you have to watch out for the kissers. That's the opar who will say, ah, da -da, it was a great kiss, goodbye, in adversity. And then they would default to their former gods. I'm going to get to the former gods in a bit. And then there is the cleavers, that's Ruth, that will stay with you, not only in thick, but also in thin and remain consistent and loyal. So, one thing that stands out to me here is discernment through actions and not words. Number two, this is actually what the pastor has said. Until better becomes our default, 
in place of former gods. Maybe, this is what I'm saying in introspection, I'm like, oh my goodness, it's possible that maybe we're also part of the toxicness of our relationships. Because, you know, in relationships, it's so easy for you to point at the other person. Oh my God, they did that, they did that. Yes, and maybe they did. And everybody does things. But I really feel like until better becomes my own default, like if I'm going through something in life, until better becomes my default, then I'm also toxic. Because that means that I will also, just like Oprah, fall into a former God. Let me explain myself. Former God. When you're depressed, downtrodden, what do you fall back to? I'm not going to define what a former God is for you. But there's some, you know, common examples that apply to most people. Drugs or sex or alcohol or rage or whatever. Some people actually have other gods. You know, mediums and mages and seers and your village people, whatever. Whatever you default to when you're low and you want to seek clarity. It's left to you. The honors is on you to honestly identify those things and then detach from those gods. That's what I'm communicating here. But when I say until better becomes default, here's how I introspected it. Better is roof, a new foundation, one that is deeply rooted in Christ so that if hardship comes, we become Ruth and we never default from God to former gods. We are rooted like rock solid in the word. We're strong. We can withhold any battle and we're not going to become super angry, like raging over the universe, right? We will become, we collect it because we're, we have the joy of God, like we're good. We have a we found a new foundation as opposed to falling back into the former patterns, right? Something else that also stood out for me was Ruth's reward. And this was what the pastor actually explained. He took us to Matthew, book of Matthew, and he explained about Jesus' genealogy. So I know that the purpose of scriptures is salvation and it's not meant to be a good, like it's, that's what it's meant for. But sometimes you also pick up other life lessons, but that's not necessarily its primary purpose. It doesn't mean that it can't inspire you as it has just inspired me, right? One thing that really stands out here, I would say is Ruth's big reward. So without boring you or going too much into it, if you guys are familiar with this story, then you understand. If you're not familiar, go and read it again and then come back to what I'm saying. I'm basically saying that like she eventually would marry a guy called Boaz and that's a whole other interesting story, which he explained. You can watch it in this video. Together, they will birth a son whose name is Obed. Obed will bear, will, will bear Jesse. Jesse will bear King David. I think most people, Christian or not, know King David, right? And King David is, you know, an ancestor of Jesus. So she, by her... Like, like honoring, like staying the path, she eventually makes history and she now enters the most powerful bloodline on the, on the universe or on the planet or in the universe or whatever. And, and to me, it, it really speaks of purpose. You know, I don't know how what motivates everyone. I'm a big woman of purpose. I believe in like, uh, um, what am I here for? What am I supposed to be doing here? And I just really enjoy how I can see a commensurate reward like with staying on the path and staying steadfast with god and what that does in fact she indeed played a role towards salvation because jesus brought salvation to the earth so that's what it was so taking back to what i first said uh ruth did not cleave to naomi because naomi was driving a ranch rover or a lamborghini or whatever people like these days right she claimed to her because of who she was the integrity of the woman and that's the point that I began with how are we picking our partnerships it, we can be confused by so many like distractions and not focus on who is this person you're picking who is this what is this situation you're picking what are the circumstances of the situation so that it almost becomes that our prayer point is for the gift the continuous sharpening of our discernment in choosing our partnerships personal business environmental whatever it is and you know, the big takeaway is like in return, God blessed her with a husband who also did a brave thing. He, he, he did something quite brave. And in doing that, they brought salvation to the world. So that's my bedtime story for y'all. If you want to go and like Google, you can go on YouTube and you can watch this, this video that he made on Sunday. Or you can also like play the Book of Ruth. They have a version that it's um, 
is actually animated like it's 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 a film so you can watch it if, if it's harder for you to to um like read the text and that's the thing like i feel like in terms of encouraging us to become our best selves you don't have to take it to 100 all in one day take it small by small but the most important thing is like try to stay as consistent as you can and i promise you guys i really am learning a lot and i just want to encourage all of you to do your very best to connect with the word because you know salvation is amazing and to be a part of that and to like learn things that actually apply to your life today as it did thousands of years ago i think it's really amazing and of course ruth is one of the important women in the bible uh yeah that's basically it so good night y'all have a wonderful night and